Today we're going to talk about accountability. Accountability is part of a, a system of government that's really important for us because uh, <clears throat> the whole basis for all of our administrative actions is from delegated authority. Modern government is essentially uh, where citizens get together and they say, hey, we want to solve some problem. We think government should do it. We pass laws. The government goes and acts, but in that passage of laws and that election of representatives, we give a significant amount of power to people that act on our behalf. So if we can think about it this way, we can think about citizens who hold all the power in a democracy. They um, choose representatives to represent our interests. As we give power to representatives, those representatives act on our behalf. Now, democracy doesn't work the way that we think, uh, that people generally think it does. Um, a democracy is not where we elect somebody to represent all of our interests. We, we elect a representative, and that representative is going to represent their own interests. Trying to think about our considerations, trying to do the good of the will of the people enough to get re-elected. But, but think about this, if you get elected in a district that has um, a diverse group of people, and you get elected with 51% of the vote, you won your election, yay, you won your election. Now, how do you represent the 49% of the people who didn't vote for you? Well, you can't. You can't simultaneously represent the 49% and the 51%. So what we do is we give people the opportunity, citizens give people the opportunity to represent the citizens in that district for some period of time. Now, if those elected officials are doing a good job, maybe, maybe they get reelected, they get to keep their job. But if they don't, we pull them from their power and we put somebody else. We give that other person power to act on our behalf. So citizens give up power to representatives. Representatives can pass laws that will restrict the citizens. If the citizens don't like what happens with that representative, they can hold them accountable by not letting them keep their job, by not re-electing them. Now, representatives have this same pattern. They might get together and say, hey, this might be the, for the best of the people. We're going to pass a law. The law takes the power from the representatives. The representatives give power to the law. The law then can constrain all of our behavior. But the law doesn't implement itself. So the representatives pass a law, and the law is given um, is delegated to some agency to perform that task. Or a different way to think about this is when we pass a law, the law gives power to an agency to perform the act of the law. So <clears throat> through the law, agencies have power to do some function. Then those agencies use that law and they use the guidelines of that law and the power that's given to them in the law, they delegate that power through their agency to people who actually implement the law. We call these people street level bureaucrats. Street level bureaucrats could be police officers, teachers. They could be, you know, the, the random person at the DMV who's taking your, taking your money um, or handing you your, your, your driver's license. Now, because we give up power in this process, because we give up authority, we delegate agencies to do the work of the law, we give representatives power. We hold them accountable. Well, how does that work? Well, agencies who have this delegated power, the law can't hold them accountable. So what happens is we give, um, we give that agency power, but we, we have representatives hold the agency accountable. So for example, an agency who's implementing some national security law will have to report back to the representatives who passed that law or the representatives who now are in the place of the people who pass the law, who sit on that committee. So that committee gets to oversee the agency to make sure that the agency is doing its job. Now, who holds those representatives accountable? The citizens. So we get these clear chains of citizens give power to representatives, representatives pass laws that give power to agencies. Agencies delegate that authority within their structure. They hold their internal um, employees accountable to that. Then make sure that to make sure that that law is done properly, agencies are held accountable by representatives, and representatives are held accountable by citizens. Now, Americans, um, we want to make sure that government is using that power wisely. They're using it effectively. They're using our money and our resources effectively, efficiently, effi efficiently. That people are not being disproportionately served one way or the other. We want it, the outcomes to be equitable from government. We want to hold these agencies accountable. We had a significant amount of distrust that we brought to, to government, even from the colonial period. We had a bad experience with the king. The king had a big bureaucracy, lots of people who were, who were exerting power over um, the people in the colonies. And the people in the colonies said, well, why don't we have the ability to, to stop some of these problems? Why don't we have some say in what's going on? So what we wanted to do when we broke away 
was make sure that we didn't have a big bureaucracy that was going to exert a lot of disproportionate power on some of us. That we'd have an ability to to uh, work with our government to make sure that that the government wasn't doing things out of our control. So intentionally in the design of our government, we left administration vague. We just said, well, they'll do the law. And um, and increasingly what's happened is, is over time that's changed. I want to make one more point. It's down here at the bottom. It says uh, reserve powers to the states. In the Constitution, we made it very, very clear that the federal government had specific powers. The federal government was going to be this this thing was kind of far away from us, but the states were gonna be close to us and local governments were gonna be close to us and we could hold them much more accountable. And in this process of, of reserving most of the power to the states, in effect, what we were saying was, we don't want a big government that we're not gonna be held accountable. We wanna be able to hold our government close and accountable. And it set up the system of dual federalism where the federal government more or less operated on its own for a long period of time. The state governments operated on their own, more or less from the state time, for the, um, for some, for some period of time. But then we had this uh, period of government expansion and there were some banking problems. I mean, these are just examples, but increasingly what happened, the pattern is that the federal government started exerting more power over the states and the states have, have obliged. Um, some of this was a national bank in 1913 where we um, resumed uh, a national banking system, the establishment of the Federal Reserve Board, where uh, we had a standard stable banking system across all the states. It was run by the federal government. That didn't exist before. States could issue their own currency and do all sorts of other things. Well, um, after in the post-depression period, the states couldn't get themselves out of um, these economic cycles and they couldn't stimulate growth. And so FDR came up with this new deal and sent some federal money to the states and um, sent the funding with some strings attached. But more or less, the state's government started to, to um, grow closer and closer together with, with the federal government. You know, another example is like uh, F, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson's war on poverty, starting to attack other other um, societal problems. Um, we see we see once again growth in in, in government. Um, some big examples in our recent time period are the Patriot Passage of the Patriot Act that allowed um, more federal government agencies to use spying and um, privacy intrusions and um, some questionable things, but but we didn't know very much about those things. And so we started to be able to hold the federal government accountable for, for the power that we'd given them. Now, um, in the most recent period of time, the Affordable Care Act became uh, a, a pretty contentious issue because it essentially said the federal government was gonna require us to, to buy insurance and regulate the insurance industry and our healthcare industry. Now, this doesn't seem probably interesting to you or an expansive government power, but coming from where we came uh, in a colonial America, through dual, dual federalism to government expansion, this is a big significant change. And there's lots of concerns that still linger about how we hold government accountable. Things about what rights of privacy do we actually have since it's not specifically de declared in the, in, the, in the Constitution, in the amendments of the Constitution. It's there. It's there because it's been interpreted that it's there. But, but what does privacy look like? Um, how can we prevent government intrusion into our privacy? Uh, how do we increase security? Um, without violating some of our norms about equity or uh, due process. Um, there are lots of concerns about like um, Second Amendment concerns, like how can we regulate firearms to, to reduce societal um, problems, but at the same time preserve that individual right to a firearm. There are lots of lingering questions about how much power do we give up and how do we hold these um, agencies at the federal and state level accountable. Well, um, a component part of public administration is understanding bureaucratic responsibility, the responsibility of the bureaucracy to hold up these standards. And um, the two basic features or components we talk about are accountability and ethical behavior. And we're gonna talk about both of these, but briefly, uh, accountability means faithful obedience to the law, uh, to higher officials' directions, to standards of efficiency effect and fairness. This is a very, very legalistic approach to holding somebody accountable or holding an agency accountable. Did they follow the law? Did they delegate authority properly? You know, it's pretty cut and dry. And we'll see that that's not exactly true all the time. But uh, the second standard is ethical behavior. And ethical behavior is much more nebulous because it's based on societal standards. It's essentially trying to avoid the the, the appearance of evil, of, of evil to avoid even looking like you're doing something that could possibly benefit you individually instead of um, society at large. Um, we're going to talk about how, how difficult that is as a, as a standard for the bureaucracy. Accountability is at the core of delegated authority. Like we talked about the, at the very beginning, when we give our power to somebody else to act on our behalf, we want to make sure that they use that properly. But also, 
it's the foundation of the bureaucracy. Agencies and, and organizations in the public sector do not do anything unless the law says that they can do it. So it's the, it's the core of what every agency does. It allows policy, uh, policymakers, our elected representatives, to control our administrators' actions. It often seems negative because it focuses on like, oh, we found a problem, they did some abuse of power. But at the same time, what it does is it holds representatives accountable for the decisions and the direction that they give to agencies. Accountability is a great thing. Hey, we used government money properly. We are doing the law the way we should. Now, policymakers often have this problem with, with accountability. Policymakers want to be elected, they want to be popular, just the way it works. Public uh, sector employees, agencies want to do the law of the job, or, uh, do the job of the law. Sorry about that. Now, when policymakers say something or they give instructions to an agency and those agencies' actions are unpopular, policymakers don't want to have responsibility for having instructed the agency to do that. So agencies end up in this weird place of wanting to follow the instructions of the law, doing the law, wanting to receive direction from the representatives. But then when the representatives tell an agency to do something that's unpopular, the agencies say, hey, you, you told me to do this. But the policymakers don't want to have a clear line of authority that connects them to uh, an unpopular action. I think about like, um, there were some lawmakers who authorized waterboarding and torture, um, what we come to find torture with the CIA's um, extraordinary rendition program, where they would take uh, uh, terrorist suspects out of countries that didn't allow waterboarding to take place, move them to a place in a country that did allow waterboarding to take place and enhance interrogation techniques. And uh, in order to do that, the CIA and other agencies sought approval from, from Congress in um, an intelligence committee briefing. And in the intelligence committee briefing, it's very, very clear in the record that the lawmaker said, hey, we authorize you to do those things. Now, when it came out in the media uh, that, that the CIA was doing these things, the CIA said, well, the lawmakers gave us authority to do that. And the lawmakers more or less said, no, 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 we didn't do that until the records were declassified. And it showed very clearly that the lawmakers had, had said, yes, we authorize you to do these things. And that put a bad light on, on the lawmakers. Now, we do accountability a variety of different ways. We hold agencies accountable to three, in three specific ways. One is fiscal accountability. We give those agencies money. We can do accounting procedures to make sure that they spent that money properly on the stuff that they were authorized to spend it on. Fiscal accountability is easily, uh, easily achieved. It's the most widespread. We do it as a routine process. We gave you money. We gave you authority to spend that money. Did you spend the money on the things that, that you were supposed to do? A little bit harder is called process accountability. Process accountability is concerned with how agencies perform their task. Did they follow the right procedures? Did they do the right steps? Now, whether or not the outcome is good or bad, how they follow the process matters. Think about an airplane crash. When an airplane crashes, of a number of steps take place before the actual incident happens. If we're investigating an airplane crash, we already know that it crashed. We already know that something went wrong. But the people who come in to evaluate whether or not that plane crashed, they'll look at the uh, flight voice recorders. They'll look at the black box data. They'll look at what the pilots were doing before the crash happened to see if they had followed the right steps to keep the airplane in the air. Now, in that, in that process, they might find that the pilots were at fault because they didn't follow the process. Or we might find that they were okay because they did follow the process. The same thing happens in a police shooting. We already know the outcome. Somebody got shot. Did the police engage the suspect the right way? Did they follow the procedures that were established in the organization, in the agency that said, engage the suspect this way? Did you feel like there was a threat? Did you engage them a different way? Did you do these things before the final outcome? Now, in order to be held process accountable, we need to be able to follow those steps. So it's a lot harder to do, but it matters because we want to make sure the agency is doing the job the way that they've been asked to do. Now, the last thing is, did the outcome occur that we wanted the agency to, to do? So in other words, is the public program doing what we asked it to do? This is very, very hard. Is an agency fulfilling its purpose as defined in the law? Well, there's a lot of factors besides the agency that could affect that. So ultimately, uh, Americans want to know that our agencies are program accountable, but it's very, very difficult because it's so hard to make sure that the agency has done the things in the right steps in the right way to make sure that it happens.